Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how you can fix your Skyrim not launching with one simple mod that is pretty much a plug and play mod. But before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Oh and also there is some more mods on top of this one in case you're looking for just a little more game changing mods to add to your mod list. But as of right now, let's dive right in. This mod honestly is basically impossible for me to just do a simple showcase for, but this mod is called Backported Extended ESL Support. This mod is an absolute must have no matter what version of Skyrim you're using, just because Bethesda decided to do that to us with the recent update, and they might be coming out with another one. This mod makes it so that your 2000 mods isn't going to waste with the recent update, especially considering most mods are going to be using a new form of ESL since the new form allows people to go up to 4000 ESLs, when the previous limit was 2000 give or take but people were hitting that, I don't know how but some people love to have that many mods, they just market as ESL so they can keep going. This mod basically makes it so that you can use those new ESLs in your version of Skyrim without having to do any extra work on your part. And if I'm being honest, without this mod, I can't even launch my Skyrim. Just because of the new update, it added a file named resources to your root folder. And I'll be 100% honest, I have no idea what happens if you remove it, so I just let it sit there. I downgrade it and it just sits there. But as you know, there are mod authors who pretty much give no support to anything less than the most updated Skyrim, which a lot of people don't use. So it's kind of sad to see that if you don't use this mod, you probably can't use most of the newest mods, but there are some who make it for every version of Skyrim all the way from Special Edition up to the latest version of Skyrim right now. We just need this mod for Xbox users or people on console. Because I know for a fact people modding on console are unfortunately still suffering. Some of them can't even access the creation menu right now. So if you consider this video clickbait, which I know some of you will, this is the absolute must have mod if you don't grab anything else from this video. Unless you fully downgrade it to 1.5.97, which is the last version of Special Edition, or at least the older Special Edition, but then you probably can't use most of the Anniversary Edition content, and I mean you paid for it, so you might as well use it, right? The worst part is that if you actually want to, you could try and fully downgrade, but that removes all Creation Club content, just keeping the most basic DLCs, but nowadays most mods require at least the most basic Creation Club, so fully downgrading isn't the best thing to do. So that means no matter what you do when you install Skyrim, that resource pack is going to be added and if you have a current mod list, you won't be able to launch, but that's where this mod comes in. And the best part about this mod is that it's a simple plug and play, nothing too complicated is needed to actually use this, so no executables or things that you have to run. You just go to the mod page, hit download, and then you install it to your mod organizer, or Vortex if you use that one, and now your Skyrim should launch again. Provided that it was launching even before the update because I know some of you have had terrible mod lists. But if you choose to stay on 1.6.1130, which is the December update, then you don't need this mod at all. It is strictly for the people who have mod lists saved for previous versions of Skyrim. And those that don't want to actually go through their list and figure out what went wrong. It's like a band-aid that'll never peel off unless you do it yourself. The only part of this that still has me a little down for my viewers is that console people can't get this. Some of you can't even launch your Skyrim and see the creations menu, which means no mods downloading. And as of right now, the only fix I know is to clear your cache and uninstall Skyrim, then reinstall. Which will remove all your mods and you have to start over. But it's the same for PC. After we downgrade, we can't see the creations menu until we uninstall and reinstall. Unless there's another method that I'm unaware of. But I mean, it does work. It's just a little tedious to get done every time. The first mod today takes us to the cities of Skyrim and this time not just one city like Whiterun or Solid 2, but mainly all the cities because we're going to be overhauling them tremendously. And to do that we just need one mod, well technically it's three, but this time we're just going to count it as one. This mod is called Dawn of Spaghetti Skyrim by True Awesome. This mod takes Spaghetti Skyrim and combines it with Dawn of Skyrim, kind of like Dawn of JK Skyrim but instead more FPS friendly. True combined them in a great way, removing certain items and adding replacements in favors of others where it made the most sense so it looks a lot better. So that you can have dense cities that actually look lived in. And when I say lived in, I don't mean that it adds more NPCs to your games because that's just a quick way to tank your FPS if you're looking to do that. Instead it just makes the city look a little more appealing. There's also patches and optional files for most certain aspects of this mod that you end up not liking, because if you're anything like me, you can completely love a mod like this, but one little thing will just ruin the entire thing and you'll just retire it, but I always end up coming back eventually anyway. But I cannot vote for how much FPS you will have while using this, but I can guarantee you that it will have more FPS than when you use Dawn of JK Skyrim. But both are great mods, I just really like this one a little more. Okay, so I originally actually didn't plan on doing any newer mods, I wanted to focus on the older ones that I missed, but this one just got uploaded and I gotta say, it's been needed for a while now. 
This mod is called EVG Animated Traversal Dynamic Climbable Ladder Doors, and that is a tongue twister, but I did the first try, so congratulations. This mod does exactly what you think it does and does exactly what I'm showing. Instead of you just teleporting up a ladder and out the door, now you will actually see your character climb the ladder. And the great part is you can actually install this mid game with no issues, because EVG no longer requires Nemesis. And I won't say this mod is absolutely essential, but if you are dead set on immersion and roleplay, then this just might be. Because you guys already use go to bed which lets you lie in bed before sleeping, and this is just like that, but more modern. I feel like this wouldn't be a true mod showcase if I didn't at least showcase some type of underrated mod. And for the underrated mod we have Aegis Anuad by Pool Charm. Hopefully I said that correctly. This mod has a few sets of armor that are all craftable and also lootable if you decide to use open world loot, which is pretty easy to do, but just a little tedious. I feel like this mod just didn't get the love that it deserved, at least not like the other full char armor, so I'm hoping to fix that, if even only by a little. Because if I can even make that download size increase by 3, I will count that as a win for this video. Each set where it makes sense has HTT applied to them, which means that they have physics. But some sets are completely static so they won't move at all, but the ones that do have physics are very nicely done. You'll notice a very little amount of issues with it. At least I have in my little of testing. Not to mention it comes with two weapons, it has a bow and it's very own special type of arrows, if we can even count that as arrows. But it also comes with a highly detailed sword. I'm honestly not sure where that random encounter came from or if it's part of a mod that I forgot I installed, but it was fun to see at least. Also a quick little side note for the people not using loading screen replacers, this mod features custom load screens for each of the armor sets, and if you do use a load screen replacer, you can just check it out on the mod page. Okay so now we gotta move on to another very underrated mod that I actually showcased before, but the thing is it just got updated. This mod is called Dynamic Campsites and it allows you to camp pretty much everywhere but the catch is that each campsite will be different depending on the location. So if you're in the woods you will just get a basic tent but at least it comes with the bed for you to sleep in. And it protects you from the cold so if you're using survival mods this is perfect if your character is about to die from the cold. But the interesting ones is that you can make tents inside of dungeons like Nordic Ruins and what's odd is the place is very nice once you set up inside of it. You would think it would look a lot worse than a regular tent but it actually looks better. But I mean it does have traps placed around so I guess you could expect enemies to attack randomly. But they just updated adding even more campsites to the mix because now there is a cave campsite. There are bugs, but hey at least you have a warm fire and a bed and it's pretty spacious as well. And I don't even know if I mentioned it but these are in their own separate world. But not just the cave site, there is also a Dwemer Ruin campsite to camp in as well. I feel like these campsites are for those people who don't want to run all the way back to the city because they forgot something. Or you're carrying too much weight and you can only walk now because you can always just set up camp in a cave or wherever you are and just deposit things. But there are restrictions, you can't set up a camp too close to a city because I mean that's just like real life, they would kick you out. But you also cannot run from combat by using these campsites either. So this isn't a cheat code or anything, but it's very fun to use. Okay so I just wanted to let you guys know, I am a little sick and that's why my voice changed in the middle of this video but we're gonna just push through. The next mod up is actually another mod by Kitty Tails named Frostbitten Dream. This mod like previous Kitty Tail Magic adds a few new spells to your game that you can experiment with, but what's new about this one, it doesn't take a few thousand magic just to cast. These spells are also centered around Vermina and the Illusion skill tree. Well technically it's like their other mod Winter Wonderland Magic, but instead this one is evil. Instead of bringing joy, you're causing suffering, it's the pretty much complete opposite. This spell pack is automatically integrated into the level list so you can find the spell books in game off of enemies once you delete them, I'll just say that, so you don't have to buy or craft them. But if you have spit installed, enemies will use these spells as well so then that's when things might get a little dangerous. These spells aren't just pure illusion either, they are a mixture of illusion and destruction so you will always end up doing some kind of damage even if indirectly by summoning a creature that will kill everything in this way. Each of these spells will cost around 250 and up magicka, not down, that's the lowest it'll go. So it's not that costly but you can't just go around throwing these around like you have infinite magicka unless you have taco god mode on, which I do for 90% of my showcases. And the highest costly one is the colors of nightmare coming in around 990 magicka, but the thing is that is per second, so 990 magicka per second. But it's still much less than the previous mod which cost 4500 magicka to cast. Just you're not going to be able to use this one for very long. I definitely had fun testing this new mod, I wonder what mod Kitty Tail is going to make next. Maybe something centering around new spells. That'd be very new. 
All right, that was it for today, guys. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. But on your way scrolling down there, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the video if you enjoyed it just a little bit or if you actually needed that first mod shown. And also make sure to endorse mod authors. But other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Peace and love.